stages of change was developed uh, by some men called Prochaska and DiClemente. It basically was uh, based on some research about cigarette smoking literature, and it, it helps cognitive behavioral therapists in particular understand the motivation and of an individual who's coming into treatment. The first stage in uh, the stages of change is called pre-contemplation, meaning the client just says, well, I don't really think I have a problem. In the 12-step or the disease model, we call that denial. I don't really have a problem. You think I have a problem, it's your problem. Next stage is contemplation. Contemplation is, yeah, I've got a problem, but I don't know if I want to do anything about it. And that's often the case. I mean, lots of people come in and say, or, or they say to their spouse, I know I have a problem, but I don't know if I really want to go through all the misery or all this stuff to stop. Some people stay in the contemplation phase for years. Sometimes they even go to the grave in the contemplation. They never even evolve out of it. And then the next phase, if, they're, if that balance beam of the contemplation phase uh, eventually tips it up, then they'll go into the preparation phase. In other words, they'll, they'll pick up a self-help book, they'll pick up, uh, maybe go to a therapist and start to learn about the resources that are available to uh, discontinue this behavior. If, if that's successful, they'll move on to what's called the action phase, where they're actually doing something. They stop gambling, they stop internet uh, surfing, they stop something. That's generally a short phase. From that, we can either go to a maintenance phase where they sustain the, the change in the behavior, or there's a relapse. And uh, if there's a relapse in the stages of change model, we try to bring them back around to not going back into the pre-contemplation phase, but actively into the preparation phase and start the cycle all over again. The idea is that we bring to bear certain strategies at certain stages. Most treatment centers assume that the individual is ready for the action phase when they walk in the door, and that's not the case. Rarely does a client, whatever the addiction is, walk in and say, I'm ready to stop. They have to hit bottom, they have to do a variety of different things to get to that place. And that's why so many treatments go awry, because there, there's a false assumption about the motivation.